Hello YouTubes and welcome back to Tally's Marine Tales. For those who don't know, I'm a marine biologist and I study stingrays. And I did my masters on them, I did my PhD, and now I'm doing my postdoctoral research, which means I've been studying stingrays for just about 10 years, which is actually crazy when I think about it. But almost, almost every single time I tell somebody that I study stingrays, this is how the conversation usually goes down. So what do you do? Oh, I'm actually a marine biologist. Oh, that's so cool. So like, what kind of animals do you study? So I actually study stingrays. Stingrays, oh my gosh, that's so cool. But what, wasn't there that guy who got killed by a stingray? What was his name? That Australian dude, the crocodile guy? Are you talking about Steve Irwin? Yeah, that was the guy, Steve Irwin. Did you know he got killed by a stingray? Oh, really? I had no idea. So even today, after all these years later, a stingray's claim to fame is basically that it killed Steve Irwin. But are they really that dangerous? And is that all there is to them? I mean, are there any other cool things we need to know about stingrays? So after promising for a few years now, we're finally doing a stingray video and I really hope you guys enjoy it. Okay, so the main question we're tackling, the question that everybody wants to know the answer to, are stingrays dangerous? And the answer is a bit of a two-pronged one, both yes and no. So first up, no. Stingrays are usually very gentle, docile, chilled out animals. They're not going to swim up and attack you. And actually their sting is only used for defense. So they don't use their sting to hunt or catch their prey or anything like that. It's purely a defensive mechanism that they have. And so, as I said, a stingray is not going to swim up and attack you. It's going to let you know if it's feeling uncomfortable. So for example, if you see a stingray lying in this position with its tail erect, it means it's saying, to you look you're getting a bit too close I feel uncomfortable please back off I have a weapon I'm not afraid to use it so you know just back up and give the stingray some space so most of the time people get stung by a stingray either by standing on them accidentally so stingrays often they like to bury themselves under the sand have a good old nap chill out um, and you can stand on them accidentally so for instance like you stand on a snake it gets a huge fright it's gonna rear up and bite you stingray exactly the same thing gets a huge fright uses its tail to sting you so it can make a quick getaway or the other way people mostly get stung is through fishing incidents. So fishermen either intentionally or unintentionally catch a stingray and they, a lot of the time, they don't know how to handle them. So for example, these two guys have both caught a stingray, both handling it. The stingray is in like severe stress and attack mode and neither of these fishermen have secured the tail and the sting. So the stingray is gonna try and sting you because it's just like, I'm stressed, let me go back to my home. So basically, like with most other animals, if you piss them off, then yes, they can be dangerous. And if you get up in a stingray's grill, it will sting you and it's going to hurt like hell. So how does a stingray sting? Well, a lot of the times people actually think that the whole tail is a sting. So for instance, in this video, this guy is referring to the whole tail of the stingray as a sting, and that's not true. So excuse my bit of a weird prop, but we have a stingray and a stingray has a tail and attached to the tail, usually about half of the way down or a third of the way down is the sting. So a stingray can whip its tail around and it can try and sting you and it's kind of like a bee sting, so oftentimes it will detach from the tail and lodge itself into you. Um, and if you look closely enough, you will see that it has serrated edges, so it's really going to be a painful experience, um, especially with quite a big sting like this. And it's there are venom sacs at the base of the tail, um, so there is some venom involved, but it's not venom that's going to kill you. It usually just stops your blood from coagulating and causes a whole bunch of pain. So apart from just getting stabbed with a serrated knife, basically, the venom will cause quite a, a lot of pain. And it's not going to kill you unless it gets you in like a vital organ. So that's what happened to Steve Irwin. Uh, the stories go that it got him in his heart. So then yes, it can kill you. But other than that, you'll be fine. You just have to try and like stop the bleeding. Don't pull it out. If the sting is like stuck in you, don't pull it out. Because as I said, it's serrated edges. So you're just gonna do more damage. Just get yourself to the nearest hospital and they will sort you out. Now, as I said, a stingray is not just gonna sting you like out of the blue. So it's actually pretty easy to avoid getting stung by a stingray. Um, if you're walking in shallow, sandy areas where there are known to be stingrays around, you do what is called the stingray shuffle, where essentially you just like 
like shuffle your feet in the sand so that they can hear you coming and swim away and you don't stand on them. Or if you're a fisherman and you catch a stingray, the first thing you need to do is secure the tail and the sting. So usually what we do is we sort of grab right at the tip of the tail and then take a piece of cloth or anything that you have to wrap around the part of the tail where the sting is. So there you have, you have the sting secure. Um, never try and lift a stingray by its tail because this can severely like damage their spinal cord. So secure the tail, use your other hand, get it underneath the stingray, lift it up, and put it back in the water. Um, I know not everybody loves stingrays as much as I do, but you know, we just gotta respect the world around us and try and get them back home without hurting them. Okay, so now we've got that out of the way, I want to focus on some fun stuff because there's really so much more to a stingray than its sting. Did you know that they're actually cousins to sharks? So they're very closely related to sharks on the evolutionary tree of life and they share very many similar characteristics with sharks. So for example, their whole skeleton is made out of cartilage, the stuff you find in your ear, and there's not a single bone in their body. So they're essentially just flattened versions of sharks and we as scientists often call them flat sharks. Some other cool nicknames that we as stingray scientists have for them is either sea flap flaps or sea pancakes. Let me know down in the comments which is your favorite. Um, and another fun fact, a group of rays is known as a fever of rays, which is really quite cool. Not quite as cool as a shiver of sharks, which is the collective noun for sharks, but a fever of rays is still pretty cool. Now, if you've ever been up close and personal with a stingray, you might have seen these weird, funky black whole type looking things behind its eyes and you might have been wondering what they are like is it part of the eye what is this thing and it's actually technically a stingray's nostril so a stingray has a mouth obviously but the mouth is underneath the animal so it's on the underside so a stingray will usually swim along over a sandy bottom and so every time it would need to like breathe in, it would get a mouthful of sand, which would be super unpleasant. So stingrays have evolved these holes behind their eyes, nostrils, they're actually called spiracles. And so they'll take in water through the spiracles, pass it over their gills and then pass it out. And that's how they breathe without getting a mouthful of sand, which is pretty cool. Um, and so if you are a fisherman and you do catch a stingray, don't ever stick your fingers inside of those holes um, because it's how they breathe and you will damage it, which is, not ideal. Now the reason why a stingray spends most of its time at the bottom of the ocean with its mouth on the sand is because it likes to eat all of the little critters that live in the sand. So if you think of things like worms, prawns, shrimps, crabs, everything that lives in the sandy bottom of the ocean is usually what a stingray likes to eat. Now, another problem that a stingray faces is that, again, its mouth is on the underside, but its eyes are on top of its head. So how do they find their prey when its eyes are on the one side and its mouth is on the other side? Again, they've evolved a pretty cool way around this and they can detect the electrical signals of the bodies of their prey, which is super cool. So essentially a stingray will be cruising along, it will all of a sudden detect the electrical signal of a prey item, it will usually reverse and then start sucking up whatever it detected in the sand and that's how they hunt. And finally, I wanted to speak a little bit about my own personal research, which focuses on figuring out where rays like to live, how far they like to move, are they resident, do they stay in one place, do they migrate across different areas, like what habitats are important to them. These are all questions that we as scientists still don't know for many stingray species. They've kind of been like, the forgotten group of animals in the ocean. So there's a lot of things that we don't know about them, but we're slowly starting to change that. And myself and other researchers are using a type of tracking technology called acoustic telemetry to track where these stingrays go. Um, and I have actually made a whole nother video about this, which you can see over here. Um, and we're just starting to figure out that these stingrays can migrate huge distances. So for example, the cow nose ray, which is one of my my personally favorite species. I mean, just look at that cute face. So they form these big aggregations every year and they migrate along a huge chunk of the eastern coastline of the continental US. So every year they migrate from 
Chesapeake Bay in the north down to Cape Canaveral in the south and we're talking about a distance of over a thousand kilometers here that they migrate every year one way and then they still go back so that's really really cool and my own personal research here in South Africa has also just highlighted the migratory route for a species called the duck ball ray and I've shown that it also migrates over a thousand kilometers along the South African coastline every year so there are some really powerful and graceful swimmers in the world of of rays and we're just starting to figure this out. So stingrays deserve to be known for so much more than just killing Steve Irwin and I really hope you'll remember at least one other cool fact that I've spoken about in this video. When you're talking about stingrays with your group of friends, I mean I'm sure most people don't sit around talking about stingrays, I do but that's just me, I'm obsessed. Um, and remember, a stingray is not going to sting you unless you give it reason to, unless you frighten it so much that it feels like it needs to sting you. Other than that, they're super cool animals. I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please remember to hit the thumbs up button, the subscribe button. And until next time, I hope you all have a very happy day.